The objective in this area are, are several. Number one, to give you some sense of uh, slavery uh, in the Atlantic world, uh, especially in uh, the colonial period. Then to give you some sense of Mr. Jefferson uh, and the kind of background and upbringing he had. And then to suggest some sense about Jefferson's attitude uh, towards slavery. Uh, at the beginning on the wall uh, that, I'm, that I'm facing, uh, you will see a variety of things that suggest the institution of slavery. Um, there's a small map on the left-hand side, there on the left-hand side of, the, uh, um, uh, of that portrait uh, by George Moreland that gives you some sense of the number of, um, of Africans who came to the New World. You will see uh, that they came from all, all portions of Africa, from Senegal to the Bight of Biafra to the Bight of Benin, all the way over to West Central Af Africa, even Madagascar and other places. But the largest number comes from, uh, as you will see, West Central uh, Africa. Somewhere around five million Africans disembarked in places like Pernambuco, Brazil, and South America. Somewhere around four million landed in the Caribbean, Jamaica, Barbados, Haiti, Cuba, uh, those areas. 400,000 came to North America, 400,000. Whether they were uh, dealing with uh, uh, slave ships, building slave ships, and uh, going uh, and transporting Africans back and forth, uh, every, the American economy, the agricultural economy of America, in some way, directly or indirectly, depended on the institution of slavery. And so Jefferson, from the very beginning of his life, there was an enslaved person uh, who actually put him on a pillow and presented him to his uh, father, Peter, and his uh, mom, Jane. And there was a, a slave at the end of his life um, who actually, his name was Burl Colbert, who actually uh, fluffed up his pillow because he was the only one who understood what Jefferson was saying when he was at the end of his life and couldn't speak. He was the only one who understood uh, that he was uncomfortable and needed his pillow adjusted. So from the time he was born until the time he died, slavery was a part of the world that he lived in. Here you see a um, series of items that relate to the period of the Enlightenment. Uh, you see uh, uh, Inkwell by Voltaire, that's, that's an a image of Voltaire's head. Vo Voltaire's head. You see uh, glasses and you see uh, Jefferson, who was a voracious reader, by the way. Uh, you see this uh, revolving book stand where he could read one, two, three, four, five books at a time. You know how he had that book stand where he could read five books at a time and keep them open so you don't lose your place? And then you walk like a couple feet that way and some guy, his whole day, every day is to pound nails. Oh, oh. Like, so you get to do all of this fascinating stuff and the people working for you are pounding nails over and over and over, you know, and you saw there were like five steps to making a nail and you, your sole goal is to make the most nails. So you get to be creative, thoughtful, and everybody around you has to be bored. You know, I took away like the paradox of liberty that there's this really uncomfortable connection there, that, that's, that some people were freed to do all this grand, you know, philosophical thinking about, you know, politics and government and the nature of morals because other people were bored. You know, that, that the fact that, you know, that, that Jefferson, the, the leisure time that Jefferson enjoyed um, was on the part, you know, built on the backs of enslaved people, you know, piling up all this wealth and stuff so that he was freed. You will see uh, here some sense of what we're suggesting about his view of enslavement. And you will find out as you read that Jefferson was not Jefferson believed in emancipation. He did not believe that emancipation was something that could happen here. He believed in emancipation connected with um, colonization, so that he felt that blacks and whites could not live together, and once they were set free, they should be um, um, uh, delivered someplace else uh, in, in order to, uh, uh, to, to uh, enjoy their freedom. Interestingly, 1791, he has a uh, letter in the, somewhere around uh, August. 
He has a letter from a man by the name of Benjamin Banneker, African-American. He's a scientist. He is a uh, author, a very, very learned person himself. He writes a letter. What he said was he wanted Jefferson to help and to assist in this uh, in the liberation of his people, and he used, he sent him a, a copy of the Almanac. He used himself as a way of saying, this is what's possible given the, uh, the help, given the education, given the, the support, this is what's possible within the black community. Eleven days later, uh, Jefferson wrote him back and said, you know, wonderful letter, wonderful Almanac, but I don't believe that the enslaved can in any way um, rise to the level of intelligence and the level of sophistication that you have risen to. So I, I, I generally say to folk when they ask me what I think about Jefferson, I say he was a man who was, a, 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 in terms of his intellect, he was ahead of his time. In terms of his morality, he was a product of his time. Uh, and so I think more than most, though, Jefferson grappled with this issue. I think that kind of summarized the entire exhibit was that intellectually Jefferson was ahead of his time, but philosophically he was a product of his time. Yeah, that's, and that would be, that's so current for today. He did a good job at not giving you the answer for how we should judge him, not saying he was this or he was that. I think what it does effectively to us is we're all a product of our time now, and we might think we're right, other people are wrong, and 200 years from now everyone might think we're all wrong. Yeah. You know, so it kind of makes you step back too and think, well, how am I seeing my time? It's, it, I think it shows we're, sometimes we forget, but we're a fairly young country. And now we're kind of looking at it and saying, yeah, well, you know, we got some things right, we got some things wrong, and it's okay to look at both of those so that maybe we can be more right the next time. Right.